five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one. I'm from a place where the girls are always looking pretty. You might have heard of us. We call it Shy City. We build champions here who define gritty. We don't do excuses. We don't do pity. Rose is coming back stronger. That's a guarantee. Cutler's coming back too. He's beastly. Going into Marshall, the title's ours easily. Blackhawks are winning titles. Trophy looking massive. Don't forget about the Cubs, Sox, Crosstown Classic. With so much greatness, we gotta show bravado. You got your boys Ambro and Mike Mercado. Welcome in, everybody, to the Chicago Beat. I am Mike Mercado. It is March 27th, 2013. And actually, to the surprise of all of us, it's a little bit like spring. It's 43 degrees outside. It is beautiful. And that is all because the Chicago Blackhawks beat the Calgary Flames last night 2-0. And the Miami Heat come to the United Center to defend their 27-game winning streak against the Chicago Bulls. As always, I'm here with my best friend, the best in the business, Secret Producer Man. You can find us everywhere in the universe. We're on Twitter, at the Chicago Beat. We're on Facebook, the Chicago Beat. And, of course, the new and improved, beautiful, the Chicago Beat, Site.com. It is everything. Chicago, entertainment, music, sports, travel, everything you need Chicago, you got it right there. So it was an interesting day last night, huh, Secret Producer Man? Me and you were on the phone for a little while talking about the Blackhawks game, talking about the Heat, watching some of the basketball games on TNT, and it's it's great. I love March. I mean, March to me is one of the best times of the year. You have baseball right around the corner, which I cannot wait. I cannot believe next week's already April. That means Cubs and White Sox. That means on Friday, it's finally here. The baseball special, Cubs and White Sox talk all show long. You have March Madness. Of course, my bracket, if you guys have been watching you know, watching the show, following the show, whatever, you guys know my brackets are uh, muscle menos, I guess you could say. Uh, Secret Reducer Man has a pretty good one right now. I mean, you're at 80% accurate. I guess Harvard screwed you over once. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's great. I love March. I, I absolutely love March. But nothing nothing compares to what today brings. And that is all about the Chicago Bulls playing against Miami and just that crazy streak. But first, we're going to talk about the Blackhawks coming up next here on the Chicago Beat. I'm bouncing off the walls again. Whoa, and I'm looking like a fool again. Whoa, I threw away my reputation. One more song for the radio. Looking for the best local shipment department you can find? Visit InFlightExpress.com. If you guys are looking for a freight shipment that you guys need to get done, visit InFlightExpress.com with the best staff and delivery men you can have. They are the best in the business. And speaking about the best in the business, how about last night's Blackhawks game? I mean, yeah, they won 2-0, but my lord, they were dominant. They were dominant last night. I think Calgary only had 16 shots on goal. I mean, that's impressive. And that is impressive. I think last night what I took the most out away from that game was defensively how well this team is playing right now. I mean, right now they are top-notch defensively. Last night you had both Nick Letty and Brent Seabrook score. Brent Seabrook had his sixth goal of the season. Nick Letty had his fifth. And Patrick Kane had to assist. And that's where I wanted to get to from last night's game against Calgary. Calgary is not the best team in the world. That's, that's not even a discussion. How about the fact that Patrick Kane is playing like an MVP this season? I mean, he really is. And, and I wanted to, I had this conversation yesterday with one of my good friends, Sean Anderson, on Facebook. Again, you can find us on Facebook at the Chicago Beat. You can find us on Twitter at the Chicago Beat. I brought this up to you guys. Is Patrick Kane the NHL most valuable player this season? So here are some stats that I had Secret Producer Man sent to me. Here we go. In 32 games played, Patrick Kane has had 17 goals, 24 assists, has 41 points in total, has a plus-minus of plus 13, and has had two game-winning goals. Now, the only person next to him that I could even think about that would be an MVP candidate is Pittsburgh Sidney Crosby. And his numbers are 34 games played, 15 goals, 39 assists, a plus of 24 with one game-winning goal. So, again, Sidney Crosby is just having another Sidney Crosby season. I mean, there's it, it's hard to even fathom how good of a season he's having, how good Pittsburgh's having a season. So, these numbers, again, they... They're pretty close. I mean, I don't think you could say either one way or the other that you're wrong if I said Patrick Kane was the MVP. So I wanted to go a little bit deeper. How about this? Pittsburgh right now, since we don't get to see the Eastern Conference through to the lockout, Pittsburgh right now in in the Eastern Conference is in first place. Right now, Pittsburgh is 26-8. and eight. I mean, that's pretty impressive. The next closest team is Boston, who I picked to play against the Chicago Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup, are 21-7-3. and three. 
So that's your Eastern Conference. In the Western Conference, Chicago right now at 25-4-3 and three on top of that point streak, it's, it's hard to say one, Patrick Kane is head over heels, head over shoulders, the best player in the NHL right now. He should be the MVP. To me, the comparison comes to a lot of Derrick Rose against LeBron James two years ago, almost three years ago now. Derrick Rose was the best player on the best team in the, NA, in the NBA that season. Right now, Patrick Kane is the best player on the best team in the NHL. A lot of people argue that Pittsburgh is just as good as Chicago. Anaheim is just as good as Chicago. Boston is just as good as Chicago. And they all have validity to them. They're all legit arguments. But if you're sitting here and asking me who's my MVP this season, the most talked about, watched about, most important player in the NHL right now is Patrick Kane. I don't think there's an argument towards that. You know, if, if come the end of the season, uh, Sidney Crosby has won the MVP, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't even it wouldn't be a a shocker. It wouldn't be a disappointment. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a lot of things. But right now, I, as unbiased as I can be as a Chicagoan, I think it's hard to not give the MVP to the guy on the best team that captivated and saved the sport, for lack of a better word. And they saved the sport, and he was one of the main reasons this team is so good right now. So I think that's a great conversation to have. I, I think it's going to be a race that's going to go down to the wire when it comes to it. Now, something else that's going to come down to the wire is his goaltending. I mean, last night, Calgary gets 16 shots off. Ray Emery goes to 12-0 and of the season. Crawford's having an awesome season. So, I, again, I was having this conversation over on Twitter, again, at the Chicago Beat. Or if you want to follow me personally at Mike Mercado to at M Mercado two three 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 excuse me it's a new one now thanks to Secret Producer Man that's at M Mercado two three 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 for my personal Twitter. Do you think the Blackhawks are working on a trade right now? Maybe to get a second line center or defenseman. See, I think that's that's what we're seeing right now. I think you're seeing a lot of key players. See, the team right now has. Great depth. I think that's what you're seeing, the biggest difference between the Blackhawks and a lot of different teams in the NHL. So they have a lot of depth who are playing up to their potential. But with two goalies, I mean, obviously in the NHL players, you're not going to play two goalies along the way. And that's the time where your goalie has to be hot, consistent, and be ready to make a playoff push. I think one way or the other, whether it's Ray Emery or Crawford, somebody's getting traded. Crawford has a two-year deal and Ray Emery has a one-year deal. Is that right, Secret Producer Man? Okay, so a one-year deal for Ray Emery, a two-year deal for Crawford. It could go either way, and they could trade Crawford right now and get some depth, even more depth on this team, and be ready to make a uh, Stanley Cup push. And again, that's what we've been talking about all season. If Kane wins the MVP, that's nice. The Blackhawks have had the point streak. That's awesome. It means nothing if you don't win a Stanley Cup, especially right now. You're the talk of the town. You're the talk of the league. You have to win right now. And that's crazy to even think when you have great teams like Anaheim, Boston, and Pittsburgh right on your heels all along. It's playing out to be a great season. It's good, and not just that, it's going to be playing out to be a great ending. And on the note of ending things, the Chicago Bulls welcome the NBA champions, Miami Heat, and their 27-game winning streak to the United Center. We got Bulls and Heat talk coming up next here on the Chicago Beat. <laughs> So do you guys listen to the Chicago Beat and my beautiful voice and say, hell, if Mike Mercado can do this, anybody can do this? Well, now's your chance. Visit BeOnAir.com. That's the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. It is the best school for broadcasting with people, instructors in the industry today to help you with the curriculum. It is a 12-month program that you get nowhere else. We have two beautiful campus locations, one in Lombard and one downtown to get the big city feel. Guys, I'm a graduate of 2011, and it has changed my life forever. With now two jobs in the industry, and now a website I founded, the possibilities are endless. Visit BeOnAir.com or dial 630-916-1700 to schedule a campus visit today. And speaking of visiting, you have the Miami Heat now coming on in with their heat wave, 27 games straight of winning. I mean, an impressive streak. This streak is still going on from when the Blackhawks had their 24 straight point streak going on I mean what else is there much to say at this point we've been doing this show this podcast for a little over a year now every time it seems hell actually now that I think about it secret producer man we've been doing this since at least the Eastern Conference Finals when the Bulls played Miami so since that moment 
this Miami Heat team has never slowed down. I mean, they lost the finals to the Dallas Mavericks, but since then, it just seems like this team doesn't have an off switch. And now you have them coming into Chicago. This 27 point, this 27 game winning streak for the Miami Heat, they've acknowledged it. They've taken up to it. They're actually enjoying it for the most part from what you read and what you hear. But for Chicago, this could be it. This whole season from if and when Derek comes back to the point where Waka Flock of Flame is saying that he's going to come back. I mean, that's where we're at with this damn story. I'm not, we're not talking about Derek Rose today. I'm done with that. Okay, I'm done with that. If he comes back today, awesome. If he doesn't, so be it. The important thing is this, this season now re- relies on if you could beat Miami because you're not going to win a finals. I, it's taken us a long time. It's Secret Producer Man, all you guys at Twitter, at the Chicago Beat and on Facebook, you guys have been killing me. I've kind of come around a little bit. I don't know if the Bulls are going to make the finals. I don't know if they're going to make the conference finals. I don't know if they're going to win a series. But right now, if you beat Miami, whatever you do the rest of the season comes down to you beat Miami in the middle of the streak. You will be remembered as the team that ended the streak. And that's that's huge. That's huge on a season that, that has not had anything like that. Almost had nothing to play for. All you've played for all season was to stay afloat for your best player to come back. That's all that's happened this season. That's what the season's been for the Chicago Bulls. Coach Tibbs, it's been try to get the most out of eight players, if you're lucky if you have eight players. If you're Joe Kim and Luol Deng, it's to maintain, stay afloat, and stay healthy, which they haven't been able to do. The Bulls surprised us by beating Indiana a few days ago, and then they beat Minnesota. So, you know, they have their own little win streak going on against a, a, two, a two-game winning streak against a 27-game winning streak. But regardless, I, I think right now, what you what you're seeing is everything the season has represented comes down to this one game. You got to beat your arch enemy, and you got to beat them when they're at their hottest, and when you're at your weakest at this point. It's it's going to be a. I think the Bulls are going to win tonight. I honestly think that tonight they're going to be up. This is a game that the Bulls want and need. This is a game the black that the Miami Heat almost can overlook. Because you have, they have San Antonio next. So if you're a Miami Heat, are you really looking at the Bulls without Derrick Rose and saying, this is the team to do it? That's, I'm banking all of this that this team looks over the Chicago Bulls and that defensively the Bulls do what they do best, and that's frustrate the Miami Heat. I think the Bulls are going to win today, but it's no, it's no guarantee. This season, there's, there hasn't been a guarantee. It's just, I don't know how many times you could say it. They have a 27-game winning streak going on. That's huge. LeBron James is the MVP of the season. So if you sit here and you say it's not a big deal if, if the Bulls beat Miami today, it is a big deal. This is the NBA Finals for them. They can almost stop playing the rest of the season if they win this game. And it's a confidence booster. Because what if you avoid Miami for the next two rounds in the playoffs and then you meet them in the conference finals with the Derrick Rose? It, it's little things. And again, I, that's the optimist in me. I... I it's very likely on Friday's Chicago beat, I could come in here and the Bulls could lose by 20. That's a, that's a great possibility. But I think they're going to win today. I really think. And that's going to be a good game. It's a primetime game on 7 o'clock on ESPN and on Comcast Sportsnet. Should be good. We wrap up shop next here on the Chicago Beats Wednesday edition. <laughs> Got my toes in the water, ass in the sand Not a worry in the world, a cold beer in my hand Life is good today, life is good today I hope that every one of you guys enjoyed this hump day edition of the Chicago Beat. Don't forget you can follow us everywhere in the universe if you want to keep up with us during the games. We're on Twitter at the Chicago Beat. We're on Facebook, the Chicago Beat. And of course, if you want to follow me personally, I'm at Twitter at Mercado. 2333. That's at Emmercado 2333. Hope you enjoyed the game tonight. Hopefully, the Bulls pull off a big victory. I will see you Friday for always here at ICB Lombard and Teak Producer Man for all his hard work. You've been listening to the Chicago Beat. See you Friday, guys.